My name is Leon Barron. I'm a solutions architect at Tiger, And in this video, we're going to run through the steps needed to take a bare bones Kubernetes cluster to a cluster that has Calico, Prometheus, and Grafana deployed and running, and Calico components exposing metrics for Prometheus consumption. Now, how we'll do that is we're going to take a Kubernetes cluster that has no CNI installed in it, and using Helm, we'll deploy Calico open source and the Prometheus stack. We'll then enable the Calico components to expose metrics and ensure that Prometheus discovers these metrics. Finally, we'll create a sample dashboard in Grafana to display these metrics. Now, before we begin, let's first take a look at the lab environment we have set up. Here, we have a three node Kubernetes cluster installed using kubeadm and a bastion host where we will be running all of our commands from. We have one master node and two worker nodes, and the node network is 10.0.1.0 slash 24. The pod network is 10.48.0.0 slash 24. And finally, the service network is 10.49.0.0 slash 24. The Calico components whose metrics we're interested in are Calico node and specifically Felix, Calico Typha, and Calico Kube controllers. As a brief overview of what each of these components do, the Calico node runs as a daemon set on every cluster node. And Felix, which is the component that we're interested in, is a core process running inside of Calico node. Uh, one of the main responsibilities of Felix is realizing and enforcing Calico security policies on the data plane. Now, Calico Typha is a caching data store proxy that sits between the Calico nodes and the Kubernetes API server. And really its main function is to allow for scale. And then finally, we have the Calico Cube controllers. They monitor the Kubernetes API and they perform actions based on a cluster state. So I've now SSH'd into the Bastion server. And to confirm the Bastion server's network information, we can run IP ADDR. We can see that the Bastion server's IP address is 10.0.1.10 slash 24. And that's in keeping with the lab architecture. Now, it's from the Bastion server that we're going to run all of our kubectl commands and Helm commands to really build out this infrastructure. But to get a feeling for where we currently are, let's run the command kubectl get nodes. So we can see that we've got three nodes deployed, one control plane or master node and two worker nodes. And the IP address information is again in keeping with the lab architecture. You may also notice that these three nodes are in a not ready status. The reason being is because there is no CNI deployed here. And we can further confirm that by running a kubectl get pods A. Here we can see that we've got a number of pods that are indeed running, but the pods that are running are actually reusing the IP address from the node that they're on. So these pods are host networked pods. The two core DNS pods are in a pending state. And the reason is because they're trying to get an IP address from the pod network, but because we've got no CNI deployed, there's no way that they can get an IP address from that pod network. So let's do that. Let's deploy Calico open source and get a CNI deployed and get all of these pods up and running. As I had mentioned, we're going to use Helm to deploy Calico open source. And the first step to doing that is adding the Project Calico Helm repo. Once we've got that done, we're going to create a namespace called Tiger operator. And it's this is the namespace that we're going to target our Helm install into. So if we run the command Helm install Calico project Calico Tiger operator, I've chosen the latest version available at the moment. And we're going to install it into the namespace Tiger operator. The Helm install has completed, but we can check the deployment status by running command kubectl get tigera status. So here we can see the API server resource and the Calico resource. 
none of which are available and the Calico resource is progressing. We can get a deeper understanding of what's going on by running kubectl get pod minus a. And here we can see all of the Calico components that are being deployed. So we've got the Calico API server, we've got the Calico kube controllers, Calico nodes, Calico typha, and the CSI node drivers. Now, because the Calico node pods have been deployed, if we rerun the kubectl get tigera status command, we'll now see that the Calico resource is available. We can also see that the API resource is available too. So if we rerun the get pods, we now see that everything is running. To confirm completely, if we do a kubectl get nodes, we can see that now all nodes are in a ready state. So with Calico open source deployed and all the pods up and running, let's now continue on to deploying Prometheus. Again, we're going to be using Helm to deploy Prometheus. And again, the first step is going to be to add the repo. Once that's added, we're going to create a namespace monitoring where we're going to target the Prometheus deployment. We then run the Helm install Prometheus stack into the monitoring namespace. So once this is completed, we can check the status of Prometheus by running a kubectl get Prometheus minus n monitoring. So we can see here that we've got the Prometheus stack, kube, prom, Prometheus, and we've got the version. Got one desired, nothing is ready yet, so it's still going on. We can check further by checking on the pods in the monitoring namespace. And here now we can see that we have alert manager that's running. Got the Prometheus stack, kube, prom, Prometheus. That's also running. We have Grafana that's running. We've got the Prometheus operator running, the state metrics, and then the Prometheus node exporter pods all running. So now that they're all running, we should get a good output from here. And indeed, we see now that it's ready. We can also check Grafana. And to check Grafana, we can take a look at the services that are in the monitoring namespace. And here we can see all the services deployed, one of which being Grafana as a cluster IP address and an IP address listening on port 80. Now that we have Calico, Prometheus, and Grafana deployed, let's look at how we can expose both Prometheus and Grafana so that we have access to their UIs. In this lab, we already have an ingress controller deployed as you can see here. So I'm going to expose both Prometheus and Grafana using this ingress. But there's no need to use an ingress if you don't wish to. You can always use a node port or a load balancer to accomplish the exact same task. Now, let's take a look at the ingress needed to expose Prometheus. So you can see that it's of kind ingress. We've named a Prometheus service, and we're going to deploy it into the monitoring namespace. Once the ingress is fully up and running, we should be able to browse to this host or URL to access the Prometheus UI. And down here describes what service the ingress is going to match to. So if we run a kubectl get service on the monitoring namespace, we can see that this service name matches to this cluster IP service. And we can see that that service is listening on TCP port 9090. Now, if we want to look further into that, we could run a kubectl get endpoints for that service. And we can see that it has been backed by this IP address. If we want to look even further again, we could do a kubectl get pods minus n monitoring, minus o wide, and then grep for that IP address. And there, we're going to see the pod that 
backs the service. So this is the pod that's backing this service, and this pod is the Prometheus server itself. Okay. So let's now apply that ingress. Now, the ingress is going to take a couple of seconds to apply. We can monitor that by running a get ingress. And we can see that this is the ingress that's currently being deployed, but we've got no addresses associated with it. So if we were to open a browser to this location, we wouldn't see anything. Take a look again, and eventually we're going to see addresses that are attached to it. And once they're attached to it, then we know that we've got access to it. So as you see here, we now have these two IP addresses attached to this ingress. So if we were to open up a browser to this location, we should now see the Prometheus UI, and indeed we do. We can even check the targets that Prometheus already has, and it's quite interesting because we've deployed it uh, through Helm and it was the full stack, it's already monitoring itself. So it's already monitoring Alert Manager. It's ma monitoring the Prometheus operator, the Prometheus server, the state metrics, and a node export. It's also monitoring some Kubernetes components like Kubelet and the API server and core DNS. So this is all great. What we want to do is we want to add the Calico components as targets here. But before we do that, let's first expose Grafana as well. The next step is to expose Grafana using our ingress, and it's going to be very similar to how we exposed Prometheus previously. Let's take a look at the ingress YAML needed for Grafana. We can see it's of kind ingress again. We're calling this Grafana service and we're deploying it into the monitoring namespace. This will be the host or the URL that we're going to use to view the Grafana UI once the ingress is fully up and running. And again, we can see that this ingress is matching the service named Prometheus Stack Grafana. And again, we can check the services in the monitoring namespace. And we can see that this service matches with this cluster IP service. And this cluster IP service is listening on TCP port 80. So we could look through the endpoints and the pods that are backing this service. But for now, let's just apply the ingress Grafana YAML and take a look at the Grafana UI. This will take a few seconds. So what we can do to monitor it is run a kubectl get ingress minus n monitoring. And we can see that the Prometheus service, of course, already has IP addresses um, attached to it. But the Grafana service that we just applied has nothing. So let's wait until that's populated, and then we'll look into the Grafana UI. So now we can see that both Grafana service and Prometheus service have addresses associated with them. So let's now open up this URL to view the Grafana UI. And we're presented with the Grafana UI. Here we can take a look at some things. For example, we can take a look at the data sources. And what's interesting is that we're already connected to the Prometheus data source because, because we deploy this with Helm, everything is aware of everything else. So this Grafana is aware of the Prometheus that it was deployed with and it's configured the data source for Prometheus. We can also take a look at some built-in dashboards. So we've got the core DNS dashboards, Kubernetes API server, etc. And if we take a look at one of the dashboards, we can see that we're already getting metrics. 
what we want to do now is we want to allow Prometheus to pull in the Calico OSS metrics, so from Felix, from Typha, and from Cube controllers. And once those targets are discovered and metrics are being pulled in, we will create a dashboard for Felix and for Typha and take a look at what type of data and metrics that we can see. Let's take stock of what we've done so far. We first deployed the Calico components using Helm. And this gave us components such as Calico Typha, Calico Cube Controller, and a Calico node pod on every cluster node. We then deployed the Prometheus stack using Helm. That deployed components such as Prometheus, Grafana, Alert Manager, and node exporters. We then configured an ingress to allow UI access to both Prometheus and Grafana. And from looking at the Prometheus UI, we could see many targets have already been discovered both from the Prometheus stack itself and from the Kubernetes cluster. But now we want to add the Calico components to these Prometheus targets. Next, we want to get a Calico component metrics into our Prometheus deployment. And to do this, we need to follow three steps. First, we need to enable Prometheus metrics on both Felix and Typha. And to do this, we're going to edit the Felix configuration resource to enable Felix metrics. And we'll edit the installation resource to enable Typha metrics. After this, we need to create services for both Felix and Typha. And it's going to be these services that Prometheus will use to discover the endpoints and what ports on that endpoint it needs to scrape. Do note that these two first steps are completed by default for Calico Cube controllers, so we don't need to do anything further there. And then finally, we create service monitor resources that will tell Prometheus about the Felix, Typha, and Calico Cube controller services. So the service monitors are really what's tying all of these pieces together. So let's now enable the metrics for both Felix and Typha. As we had mentioned, for Felix, we're going to patch the Felix configuration resource, and we're going to set the Prometheus metrics to be enabled. For Typha, we need to patch the installation resource. And here we're patching it by specifying the Typha metrics port to 9093. Now, once we've got them enabled, we need to create services for both Felix and Typha for Prometheus to discover those endpoints. So let's take a look at the Felix service that we're going to create. So you can see that it's of kind service. It's called Felix Metrics SVC. It's in the Calico system namespace. And the label is K8's app Calico Felix. We've also specified the metrics port to be 9091. And that's the TCP port that Prometheus is going to scrape to get those metrics. So let's now apply that. Let's now take a look at the Haifa metrics. Oops, sorry. <clears throat> Let's now take a look at the Typha service that we're going to create. Again, it's of kind service. We're calling it Typha metrics SVC in the Calico system namespace. The label is K8's app Typha metrics. And again, we specify the metric port as 1993. So let's apply that also. Now, with those services created, we're ready to grab metrics from those endpoints. Let's take a quick look at the services in the Calico system namespace. And we can see that we've got both Felix metrics and Typha metrics. And notice that they're cluster IP type, but they've got no IP addresses. We're not really using them from a networking perspective. We're really just using them so that we can discover the endpoints. And we can see that it's 1991 and 1993. Now, notice the Calico Cube controller metrics is already exposing the metrics TCP port. So we don't need to do anything there. If we run a show labels, we can also see the labels that the service monitor is going to reference to pick up those endpoints. 
So now that we've created the services, we've enabled the metrics, let's create the service monitors. So let's take a look. So here's the Felix service monitor. We can see that it's called Felix service monitor. It's in the monitoring namespace. And what it's doing is it's selecting the Calico system namespace, and then it's selecting a service based on this label. And we can see here that that is going to be the same as this. Now, something to be aware of here is this label up here, the release Prometheus stack. When we create these service monitors and we're creating them in the monitoring namespace, it's this label that's telling Prometheus that it can use this service monitor and the information within the service monitor to grab new targets. So let's apply this. Now, if we take a look at the other service monitors, we'll see they're very similar. Let's look at Typha. So again, it's a service monitor. Again, we've got the release Prometheus stack, which tells Prometheus that it can use a service monitor. It's called Typha service monitor deployed in the monitoring namespace. We're looking at the Calico system namespace and we're selecting K8's, K8's Typha metrics, which is indeed the label for this monitor that we created. So let's apply that too. And finally, let's take a look at the cube controllers. Again, it's a service monitor. Again, we've got the release Prometheus stack. We're calling a Calico cube controllers monitor in the monitoring namespace. We're matching the Calico system namespace. And here we're matching K8's app Calico cube controllers, which is the same as this label for this service. Let's apply that. Now, with that done, we should be able to take a look at Prometheus targets and just see if they've been spotted. Now, this can take a few seconds. We can already see that we've got the Felix service monitor and we've got the Typha service monitor. It might take a few more minutes for the Cube controller service monitor to appear, so let's just wait. And after a few seconds, we now see the Calico Q controllers monitors. So that's everything now. If we can expand these, we can see that they're up. And if we were to take a look at these IP addresses, these IP addresses are going to be the pods that Prometheus is scraping. So that service has shown Prometheus what the endpoints are, what the pods are, and then Prometheus is scraping those pods on the, that TCP port. To be able to visualize these metrics in Grafana, we need to create a dashboard. Now you can, of course, create any dashboard you want with the metrics that have been exposed, but for this video, we will create a Felix dashboard based on what is provided in the Project Calico docs site. If we navigate to this URL, we can see a Felix dashboard.json that has all the configuration needed to create a default Felix dashboard in Grafana. So all we really need to do is copy all of this information and then change the data sources because in this example, the data source is just specified as Grafana. We need to specify it for our Prometheus and our Grafana instance. So all we need to do is change data source Grafana to data source type data source and UUID Grafana. So we'll replace all. And then we can find another data source that references Calico Demo Prometheus, which of course is not referencing our Prometheus uh, installation. So let's also change that. So to change that, we just need to change this. Let's copy that. 
So now we're changing anywhere where it says data source calico demo Prometheus to data source type Prometheus UID Prometheus. And we'll replace all of them. Now we simply just need to copy this, go to our dashboards, and import. Here, I can just paste the JSON that I have. Of course, you could save it and upload it. I'll just load it in here. You can see that it gives a name, Calico Felix Dashboard. And then when I import it, we'll immediately get all of the metrics that we need. So to recap what we went over in this video, we first deployed both Calico OSS and the Prometheus stack using Helm. We then exposed the Prometheus and Grafana's UIs using an ingress. We created services for both Calico Node and Calico Type. And remember, the Calico Queue controller service was already created. And then these services were referenced by the service monitors that we also created to tell Prometheus how to discover the Calico endpoints it needed to scrape. We verified the targets were discovered correctly in Prometheus, and then we created a dashboard for Felix exposed metrics based on a default dashboard provided in the Project Calico doc site. I hope this video has been helpful and we look forward to seeing you in future videos.